Hello Year 11 and welcome to our next video here on further graphs. We're looking at inverse functions and relations today and the inverse of something is when I sort of undo some operation. So the inverse of multiplying is dividing, the inverse of adding is subtracting, right, things like that. Now algebraically we can find an inverse function quite simply by swapping the x's and y's over. Right? Uh, we might rearrange that so we make y the subject again. Uh, but that will produce the inverse function. Graphically, we can also find the inverse function by reflecting the graph of our original function in the line y equals x. Right. Now, some important points to remember or to know. The domain of the inverse uh, is the range of the original function, and the range of the inverse is the domain of the original. Okay, So they swap over as well. And that can be helpful when we are sketching these, as we'll see in this first example. Now, this looks a lot like, I suppose, the cos of x, uh, if we're measuring it in radians. So, uh, we can see here originally, that I've got the line y equals x in here, and I'm going to reflect it about that. Uh, but we might do this sort of point by point to begin with. So, my original range, right, the range of my original function, is from negative 1 to 1. And that's going to be, uh, so if y equals negative 1 to y equals 1 is the range of my original function, then the domain of my inverse is going to be from x equals negative 1 to y equals 1. Right here. So you can see we've just sort of uh, flipped that around there. So my graph is going to fit within that red band. The first point we should probably look at is where the two intersect. Now, uh, we could say that's the solution of these two graphs, where my green function intersects this line, y equals x. That's where this function is equal to x. Okay. And so where they intersect, uh, that point's not going to move. Uh, next up, let's have a look at this point here, uh, which has the coordinates 0, 1. Right. Swapping those around. I get the coordinates 1, 0. Okay, so that point is going to map over to here. Uh, let's choose another point. Uh, this point here is going to map over here. Right. And this one over to here, right? That's from, uh, let's call that negative pi, I think. Uh, negative pi, negative 1 is going to go to negative 1, negative pi. Right here. So I've got a few of those points here. We're going to do the same with points on this side. Uh, over here. All right, so we'll map that up that way. Remember, we're, they're being reflected about the line y equals x. Right here. So we're going to run perpendicular to that line y equals x, right? And we're going to uh, repeat that distance from our point to the line and then the line to the point. There's another one. Another one here, okay? You see that we go perpendicular to that line y equals x. And as far as we go from our point to the line, we go that distance again in the same direction. We get these here. Now, we've probably got enough points to draw a smooth curve through there, and we can see what shape the curve is anyway. So there we go. We get a curve a bit like that. That's as good as I can draw it in PowerPoint. Now, that'll sort of do us. Uh, we had to draw the inverse relation. It's not a function because it doesn't pass the vertical line test, but it is a relation. Uh, so we've got that there. Another way we could produce this is by uh, rotating and flipping, if you like. So consider this little bit here. Now that was my positive x-axis, that was my positive y-axis. Now my positive x-axis is pointing straight up, that's what I want. The positive y-axis isn't, and I can see that because uh, this isn't the line y equals x. So I flip that over, right? and you can see now that they match up. This, is the positive, this was the positive x-axis, this was the positive y-axis. Okay. So we've rotated it 90 degrees anti-clockwise and then uh, flipped it left to right. Here's another one. It's a bit simpler, I suppose. We've got a straight line this time. And again, we've got an intersection here. So uh, this line here, which looks like it is y equals 2x minus 2. Uh, the solution of that with y equals x, there is exactly 1, and it's at 2, 2. Uh, and so that point there, 2, 2, isn't going to move when I take the inverse. This point here at 0, negative 2 is going to map to negative 2, 0. 
this point here, 1, 0, is going to map to 0, 1. As I said, this point here doesn't move at all. Three points is more than enough for a straight line. Here they are, and I run a line through there. And just a reminder, I could rotate it and flip it, and there we get the same thing again. Okay, That was the positive x, and that was the positive y. Right, that's what we're doing with the inverse. We swap the x and y over. Righto, there's a fair bit to go here, so hold in. To find the equation, so to do this algebraically, we switch the x and y, and perhaps, though not always, make y the subject. So here's an example. Write the inverse relation of this. Well, first thing we do is just change that x to a y. We change that y to an x. We should recognise that as a circle with a radius of 1. Um, they've got various centres. Um, but both of these are circles. Uh, they're both relations, not functions. And I would have a fairly difficult time trying to make y the subject of that. It wasn't in the first place. It's not going to be in this case either, because we'd have to have a plus or minus anyway. So that'll do us. I can read that off there as a circle with a centre at 0, 3, and a radius of 1. We're asked to graph it, and so here's our line y equals x, and our original function was this. Okay, So the centre at 3, 0, and a radius of 1. The inverse, you can see, is reflected in that line y equals x. So this time it has a centre at 0, 3 and uh, still that radius of 1. We're asked to state the domain and range. Fairly easy to see. The domain of my original function is from x equals 2 to x equals 4. And the range from negative 1 to 1. We might remember this rule. Hopefully we remember the rule. It's not so long ago that we mentioned it. Uh, for the inverse, uh, the range of the original function will be the domain of the inverse. Okay, we can see those match up. And uh, the domain of the original function will be the range of the inverse. So here we go, another equation, and we're going to write the inverse relation of this. Maybe it'll be a function, maybe it'll be, it'll just be a relation. So I swap the y for an x and the x for a y. And then we'll rearrange that a little bit, and I'll take two from both sides, swap left and right, then take the cube root to make y the subject. So y is the cube root of x minus 2. If we had to graph both of those, our original function is this cubic, looks like this. And that is a function, not just any function, it is a one-to-one -one function, okay? Because it passes both the vertical and the horizontal line test, and that'll come important later on. Now, if I reflect that in this line y equals x, then I get this inverse function down here. Okay, and that's also a one-to-one -one function. So the domain of my original was all real x. And uh, thinking about that function, there's nothing I can't substitute into it. And the range is all real y. Okay, from infinitely down this way to a uh, positive infinite up here. And that means that the domain and range of my inverse will be all real x and all real y. Okay, nothing very exciting there. Well, let's try this now. We're going to substitute x equals 1 into the orig original function. And whatever we pull out of that function, I'm going to substitute into the inverse. So my original function was y equals x cubed plus 2. If x equals 1, then y equals 3. Now we're going to take y equal 3 and substitute that into the inverse function. So we get y equals the cube root of 3 minus 2, which is the cube root of 1, which is 1. Uh, what do we notice? Maybe it's a coincidence and maybe it's not. We'll learn more a bit as we go through this video. Uh, but I end up back where I started from, Okay, that when I did the inverse of the inverse, essentially, uh, I end up back with the original function. Now, uh, what do we have here? Uh, when we talk about one-to-one -one functions, okay, if my original function is one-to-one, -one, right, passes the vertical and horizontal line test, then the inverse will also be a one-to-one -one function. Right. -o. 
Uh, occasionally, we'll restrict the domain of the original function so that we produce a function at the end, so that we don't end up with a, um, a relation, a one-to-many mapping. So here's some more functions here. Um, the inverse of this function, right? We swap the x's and the y's, rearrange that, and I end up with y equals one-third x plus a third. Okay, if we have a look, well, we should recognise that they are straight lines, uh, straight oblique lines, neither vertical nor horizontal, and so they both pass the vertical and horizontal line tests, uh, so the inverse is a function. This one here we should recognise as a hyperbola. Now swap the x's and the y's, now I'm going to multiply both sides by y minus 1, and divide both sides by x, gives me this expression means that my inverse function is y equals 3 over x plus 1. Just watch out when you go from here to here. I don't put the three little uh, therefore dots because these are significantly different. Okay, I have used that original function to come up with this expression here, but they're not in any way the same. This is the inverse. So looking at these two, uh, they even look fairly similar there although they, they do have important differences, the location of those asymptotes. And so both the original and the inverse, while not continuous, are functions, right? Uh, in fact, one-to-one -one functions. So that inverse is a function as well, whether we look at the graph or not. Now, finally, y equals x squared minus 4. We know this is a parabola concave up. And that doesn't pass the horizontal line test. That is a many-to-one mapping. But uh, let's uh, work through this a little bit. So the inverse, swap the x and the y. We end up with y squared equals x plus 4, which I might express as y equals plus or minus the square root of x plus 4. Yeah, that's a, a fair indication that this isn't a function anymore. So there's the original. There's the inverse, you can see that has been reflected about that line y equals x. Uh, and that clearly is not a function here, right? Because it fails the vertical line test. Right, yeah, so not a function. A bit more. Inverse function notation, we use function to the negative one of x. Okay. Uh, that's different to the function of x raised to the power of negative 1. Uh, this is our way of saying inverse function. It doesn't mean the reciprocal. Right? It's just some notation that we use for inverse. Now, if I have a one-to-one -one function, then the inverse of the function will be equal to x, and the function of the inverse will also be equal to x. Righto, here is a function, we're going to find its inverse. I'm going to uh, slot a y in there because it makes it a bit easier to do our algebra. So I'm going to say x equals y cubed minus 1. Uh, rearranging that, I find that y equals the cube root of x plus 1. Now, if, uh, so if I substitute x into this, of course I get the cube root of x plus 1. And then if I do the function of, uh, so if I do the inverse of the function, right, remembering my function is x cubed minus 1, the inverse is the cube root of x plus 1, so the inverse of the function is the cube root of, instead of x, I say x cubed minus 1, right, this is the function. x cubed minus 1 plus 1, expand that out, I get x cubed minus 1 plus 1, is just the cube root of x cubed, which is, of course, x. Let's try again doing the function of the inverse. So the function says to take x, cube it, and subtract 1. And for x, we're going to substitute the inverse, which is the cube root of x plus 1. We're going to put that in there. We're going to cube it, take 1 away. Uh, the cube of the cube root just gives me x plus 1. And then take 1 away, I end up with x. How neat and tidy. Here's another one. Here's our function. Here's the inverse, y equals 3 minus half x. Now, that makes that my inverse function. If I do the inverse function, if 
I find the inverse function of my function, right, I want to do 3 minus half of the original function, 6 minus 2x. Right, and I end up with x. Now, reversing that, uh, my, I want to do the function, in which case I do 6 minus twice x. Right, but instead of just leaving x in there, I'm going to put the inverse function in there, which was 3 minus half x. So it's 6 minus 2, lots of 3 minus half x. Right, and I get 6 minus 6 plus x is, of course, x again. Right, yeah, so we've just verified that. That's not something you're generally going to have to do in an exam or anything. Uh, it's just to confirm uh, that that result is at least sometimes true. Okay. I can, if I apply the inverse to my function, then I, I get back to where I started from. If I apply the function to the inverse, again, I get back to where I started from. Right. That's the end. And there's a lot to do there. Um, I hope you take it all in. I hope it all makes sense. Uh, if you've got any questions, please let me know. I'll see you in class.